This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. <laughs> In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today, it's the 28th of January, 2021, and I am 2J. I'm Tom. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, BBI showdown. In the Standard, facing Mount Kenya. And in the Star, why BBI could make or break Raila and Rutong. Let us begin with the Daily Nation mm -hmm. and what they're calling the BBI showdown. So the Daily Nation is telling us that there is a reforms agenda and it includes uh, President Kenyatta having met the governors and then making his way to Sagana mm -hmm. uh, to prepare uh, you know, the region for BBI. Yeah. And we also have Rilo Dinga taking his campaigns for BBI to Kambu. So we saw yesterday um, his rally in Gidurai mm. 45, sorry, <laughs> um, in which he asked the president to purge rebels. He said, my brother Uhuru Kenyatta is doing all he can to develop the country and foster peace through BBI, but some people have become hurdles. If I were the president, I would probably reorganize government. And we can mm. all probably uh, guess mm. who he's talking about <laughs> and who needs to be reorganized and yes. organized, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the Daily Nation also goes on to tell us how um, there were some instances of turmoil and stone throwing and things of the sort. Yeah. Um, as... Um, you know, youth were, you know, wreaking some kind of havoc. Yeah. Yes. And they, the article tells us that uh, nominated MP Isaac Mara may have been involved in sponsoring the youth. This is just a, a, an allegation mm -hmm. at this point. This is what I will say. It is only January of 2021. Yes. And in the run-up to the referendum and the election, um, I think we have to wake up to a sudden reality. Yeah. The greatest crimes historically in the world are not committed by people breaking the rules, but by people following rules and orders. And it's people who follow these orders that burn churches and massacre villages. Wow. Yes. So you have to... Yeah. You know, become an actual agent <coughs> of action in your life. You mm -hmm. cannot just agree to be told certain things and, and you blindly yes. do them. We Absolutely. have to move away from that. Absolutely. That said, though, Raila wants to purge the rebels, but I think a little rebellion within government is good for government. Yeah, true. It keeps you on your feet. Yeah, it keeps you Definitely. on your toes. No, not now. <laughs> the, the, the hoodlums we saw yesterday in Gidorai were, were conditioned in a Pavlovian manner. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, they looked like they were in a trance. And uh, those hoodlums uh, seem like they, w they would be in a position to be told if so-and-so's property is right there, go and fetch it mm. right now. I mean, GK, what you're saying is this. If this is happening in January, what will happen in 10 months' time when R yeah. Ruto, or six months' time, when Ruto mounts uh, 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 the opposition, an opposition against BBI? Mm. We are headed. And I hate to say this, but I feel like we are headed to a class war, right? Mm -hmm. Those people who stay, Lavington, Mudaiga, Runda, Karen, please be very watchful. And I don't want to scare you because just do not know that stuff that you may have in your house in six months time. Okay, maybe to, um, someone wait, else. hold on. Class war doesn't necessarily have to be so elitist that you're speaking specifically to the people in Rwanda. I don't think that's look, what it has to be. Look, I think we have to contextualize what a class war has to be or needs to be to be two, successful. Two J, yesterday, it's not about the 1% in two Kenya J, versus... 2J, yesterday people woke up with uh, their cars in Roy Sambu, some in Buruburu and some other places, marked D and then X, mm -hmm. Dynasties X. And that's right? my and that's Spring. my very and that's my very point and, and because the you. way the way that this narrative is being framed, it's border borders versus car owners, mm. and I don't think that has to be Runda versus Kangwari. By the I way, I think that could be as simple as what, what, what I was, as no. What I was saying was just an example. Mm -hmm. It's just an example. Of course. But the end game here is to uh, introduce a dynamic of conflict that we have not seen in this which country, which is very dangerous. Which I is very, very I agree dangerous. With that. Which is very dangerous. Yes. I I don't want to just say Runda versus uh, Kawangwari yeah. or. Or, you know, you know, that's not just the point. The point is we are headed to a place where the have-nots will say, uh, because you seem to have it, then I will come for that for which, that you, which have you have. Yeah, because, that I do not. because you are to blame for that. Yes. That's all I'm saying. All right, so we have a three-part criteria that we will use to break down these headlines. We'll ask ourselves, <coughs> is it topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? Is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? Yes. I think we've had good conversation on this table. 
Uh, it is a showdown, nonetheless. We will pack it. Absolutely. However, is it a BBI showdown? I'm not so sure if that's accurate. Yeah, I don't know if it's a BBI showdown. Yeah. But yeah. So maybe we can yeah. toss it based toss on it. that. Yeah. Yes. And make our life easier. On to the standard the facing standard. Mount Kenya. Facing Mount Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta is scheduled to descend on Mount Kenya tomorrow for a five-day visit mm -hmm. uh, to Mount Kenya. And I think that's a meet the people tour. It's not just a development tour. Yeah. And, um, and, and what the standard is telling us is that CS Mutaika and PS Nicholas Moragori had met leaders in Nyeri to brainstorm on, on, on this scheduled visit by the president. Now, I won't go much into what the, stan uh, the standard says, but what I want to say this is, uh, is this. Mount Kenya is the equivalent of Mount Sinai. And Uhuru has gone to tell Kikuyus that they have been worshipping the false god, the false gods of Baal. <laughs> Actually, let me not say the gods, the false god of Two Baal. M. You're making such a good point and you're not making drama out of it, right? Same. Can we talk in about... Introduce drama. No, I mean, can we equate um, Uhuru Kenyatta to Moses? He yeah. goes up to the mountain to get, you know, answers and guidance from God. Yeah. And while he is there on the ground, the people are, you know, up to a mess and, you know, and, horrible and, things. I do want and to act like Ozon. <laughs> Not acting like Ozan. I'm just trying to give drama to what you're saying because yeah. it's a fantastic drama, point, drama. Yeah. Yes, yes, right? Yes, yes. And so he comes down from Mount Sinai, which we're now equating to Mount Kenya, yes. and he finds that the people of Israel are yes. worshiping false idols, yes. right? And yes. who is this false idol? It we are is saying William that central. Ruto. Okay. That's it. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he just said it. Exactly. So William we're saying Ruto. that yes, he has come down from the mountain with the answers, and he's going to speak to his people <laughs> and guide their misguided, yes. you know, agendas. Absolutely. You're so welcome. What, so yes. what I liked about the standard, I, it's a shame. <laughs> You've chosen not to go into it. Is yeah. a statement by. It's not a shame. It's just useless. No, but listen, Kabando wa Kabando makes a valid point. Mm -hmm. He what? says that uh, the, the region is politically and hugely disorganized. Yes. And this is why this visit is so important at this juncture. Mm -hmm. A. But he says that he thinks that past retreats have sort of failed to change the tide. Mm. Now, my advice here, if the president would like to take it, should he <laughs> want to, is that you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Mm. I think on previous visits, he has gone and he has really, you know, shouted and yelled lectured. and lectured them. And I think this could be a meeting of minds moment. I think uh, if, some, if a strategy has not worked before, it is worth perhaps shifting it yes. and seeing yeah. what can work this time. However, I, 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 I don't I, think whipping central is what is going to get them and, to and I think And side. I think, GK, you're giving great advice and I think the president has heard it. Not only will he not hear it from you, but from others as well. <laughs> I think we're going we're in for a lot of interesting surprises yeah. come Monday, yeah. right? I think when we hear of the conversations that have been had, decisions that have been made, uh, that have been made I think we're going to see a new Guys, central Kenya. Let yeah. me tell you this. Gamer, please don't get it twisted. It don't <laughs> matter so much at this point in time. All you need, all we need is just a million votes or 1.2 million votes in BBI and we'll get there. Second. So you think BBI doesn't need Kikuyu? I, I mean, yeah, they, they can go support 85%. If you want William Ruto, please stick your step. Second, <laughs> uh, Kabando Kabando is not telling us anything that we do not know. Yes, mm -hmm. he's just describing a situation that has been there. And please, and I think Kikuyu must be told you are falling out of line. It's, it's, as, it's as simple as that. And they must be told. But that historically, you they've always fallen out of line. And that's well, what I was saying. On yeah. Monday, I said so, history yeah. is repeating so, itself so when it comes yeah. to Gamma. Exactly. So what is Kabano telling us? Okay, followed? maybe the star can offer some answers to some of yes. 2M's musings, right? Yes, please. Okay, the star tells us why BBI could make or break Raila and Ruto. Yeah. And so um, essentially they're telling us something that we already know. That whoever carries the day in the referendum is likely to um, you know, have the upper hand come 2022. Mm. Yeah. And so an analysis by the star, and we're going to put up a map that they have used in this analysis, yeah. Yeah. shows that about 21 counties could easily pass the bill. Oh, yes. Yes. That is followed by um, the bill being rejected in yes. Kalenjin control counties. Yes. followed by Uhuru's central backyard, which they are calling the swing votes. Yes. Mm. So I think this map kind of illustrates how that would kind of look like. Yes. But I think the most important thing is we know, um, according to the constitution, only 24 counties are needed to pass a referendum. Yes. Yeah. So the star is telling us that 21 could easily pass it. Yes. So, so the star more. inadvertently is telling us yeah. BBI has passed. Yes. Has so passed. It is, uh, no, let me tell you, it's not the star telling us that BBI has passed. It is William Ruto telling us, I know I'm going to fail. It's simple. <laughs> 
Well, t t okay. it's, it's simple as that. And don't be surprised, him... Of if last he, minute. Yeah, last minute, he will come out and support BBI because he knows it's a done deal. Yeah. Period. Exactly. Period. So what we're saying here is that if 21 counties should pass the bill very yeah. easily, all we need is three more and BBI is a done deal. Done deal. Yeah. Kusha. But, right, so who do we give our winning headline, guys? Mm. Let's give it to the star. I like the I star like for its food yeah. for thought. Exactly. There we and have it's it. the only one with analysis. Star yes. gives us our winning headline. Mm. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, where we also have a three-part criteria. We ask ourselves, is it humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And is it effective or just plain lazy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Here you have... Uh, the Daily Nation. Yes, Daily Nation. Iga. And that's caricature of Rela Odinga. And who's next to him there? It's Uhuru Kenyatta, I Uhuru, think. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. And they are jumping over the hurdles. At they are doing steeple chase. So we've jumped over signatures. Uh, signatures now we're going to county assemblies. assemblies. Mm -hmm. And they think when they jump, the county assemblies... They get to parliament. They go to parliament. And if, when that happens... Uh, we do have a referendum. Exactly. Simple as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Uh, it's interesting. It looks like there's one set of legs. Oh, yeah. So they're jumping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what yeah, this yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. But it's it yeah, can't be that easy to jump. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's a handshake team, it looks like, anyway. Uh, Next. Are, are, they, are they twins? Yeah. Okay, Some standard. Mistakes. Standard. You have, it's uh, who's that? Is that Gado? Mm. Yes. Right. And uh, it's, a, it's a drawing of a young lady uh, uh, praying on the side of her Ugandan bed. And um, the prayer is, God, please take away this man, Museveni. He has killed my father, my friends, mother, my cousin's brother, my teacher's sister, our neighbor's auntie, <laughs> the uncle, and my grandparents, and now he wants to kill my dream. I think Gado was not working yesterday, and he gave something that <sighs> he was having in store. Yeah. Um, Guys, okay, just throw it. Uh, you're, have, you're having I have, difficulty. I have no comment. What's... <laughs> Yes. No comment either. Yes. Let's move to the star. Yeah, there you have caricature of Miss Sonko. And uh, it's Miss because he's wearing Ashoka, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, there he is taking out dirty linen. And part of the dirty linen is a torn uh, jubilee. I don't know what it is, a piece of cloth next to the. It's underwear. It's underwear. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. The caption there is, I have more dirty linen. No, but how, look, look at how dirty that Jubilee underwear is. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's really so crass. It has, like, poo-poo stains yeah. and... Yeah. Can I, say I, mean, I feel like the way Sonko is going, he'll soon tell us who killed Robert Oko. Oh like, it's, it's all secrets no, are no, coming out. No, he'll actually tell us who killed Tupac. And yeah. <laughs> As well. Did you see, he yeah. made a statement talking about the death of Msando. Yeah. yeah. And he was talking about who was there on the scene. I'm not but going to go into his speculative statements, yeah. but... Yeah. We all know. No, no, this guy should just be ignored totally. And anyone, uh, please don't listen to this guy. I think he's... It's but can about guys, but time, where there's smoke, there's fire. No, I mean, we're gonna listen. What kind of smoke? If smoke is coming from Sonko, I mean, what kind of smoke? But I honestly, I, honestly, I honestly want to pose a question. Uh, is it not better to have him on the inside peeing out than yeah. the outside peeing in? I feel like he's the kind of guy, you just have to co-opt him in whatever way necessary. Yeah. Let me tell you. I know we, people have tried, maybe his the, amounts are too much, but just... The, the, the thing around Sonko that probably made him popular was a flash around him and all that. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the bodyguards and all the guns and all that. And now since that has been taken away from him, him. He's just a guy who's just Noise maker. howling out there, and I think he should just be ignored. Guys, who do we give our winning cartoon? Yeah, this uh, <laughs> Miss 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 Sonko. Yeah. Yeah. All right, to Mr. Yes. Sonko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now for our final thought, but before we get there, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, but also hit like. And now our final thought, it is inspired by a book entitled The Tragedy of Benedict Arnold, An American Life, mm. by Joyce Lee Malcolm. Yes. So this week, as you know, we've been looking at some of the um, most famous betrayals in history. And today we go to the tragedy of Benedict Arnold. So on September 25th, 1780, the American Revolution was in its fifth year. General George Washington and his senior aides were in a state of shock. Mm. Before them were captured documents that revealed the most notorious act of treason in American history, a plot to sell out America's most important stronghold to the British in West Point, New York. And surprisingly, this plot was devised by West Point's very own commander and the war's greatest hero, General Benedict Arnold. And so Benedict Arnold, if you could say quite liberally, is the American version of Judas um, Iscariot. Yes. But to be fair, we really have to understand why um, Arnold betrayed the cause that he had supported for so many years before. Yeah. So Benedict Arnold was George Washington's best, 
bravest and most able uh, battlefield commander. And history records that Arnold was a great battlefield commander. He had these magnificent instincts in battle, but he had a very fiery personality. Mm. If you served with him, you respected him. But if you were an officer trying to work with him, it was possible that you had a very different opinion. He was not a man of politics. He made enemies very easily. Mm. And so he was a constant source of controversy. But he had these genuine talents and he loved his country. And George Washington really recognized those talents. Mm. And so as a general in the American Revolution, he was a hero of a battle of one of the battles that was called the Battle of Saratoga, yeah. yes. which was a victory for the Americans and a turning point during the Revolutionary War. Mm. But after this, you know, him being crowned a hero, five generals were um, promoted over Arnold himself. And so angry and crippled, I believe, he moves to Philadelphia where he marries 18-year-old Peggy Shippen, mm. a beautiful young woman who also had ties to the British Empire, the colonizers at this time. And it's after this marriage that it is believed he started planning his acts of treason. <laughs> and so in May 1779, Arnold secretly contacted a British general to um, discuss the possibility of switching his allegiance back to the crown, the monarchy. Yeah. And he demanded £20,000 for turning his coat. <laughs> and so his his move culminated in 1780 when he secretly met a British general and he finalized these plans for West Point where he handed over these plans. And this would have been a huge turning point for the war and a blow to the Americans, but it actually unraveled by mistake. These soldiers were found with these incriminating documents stuffed inside their boots. Mm. And so Arnold caught wind of this capture and the expose of this plan yeah. and he fled to Britain. Yes. Mm. And he, in the end, only received 6,000 pounds of the 20,000 that he required. Requested, um, and he ended up resuming his previous job as a <laughs> merchant ship owner. Yeah. He died at 1801 at mm. the age of 60, and mm. he was also buried without military honors. Oh man, and what a life! And you guys said Kiku use a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, in today's money, it's like t it would have been two million pounds or something. Like two wow. million pounds, yeah. which yeah. is a, I mean, what? That's about 300 million shillings. However, guys. Anyway. You know, betrayal doesn't pay off. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Tell that to Gemma, root aside. <laughs> you know, when Benedict sold um, West Point for a mm. whole 20,000 sterling pounds, he actually put it down in writing. What a fool this guy was. <laughs> the man wrote a letter to John Andre, and Andre was a top aide to a British commander called Sir Henry Clinton. Mm -hmm. Now, he thought by coding the message, no one would actually intercept it. Mm -hmm. Now, in the letter, he states his consideration, which is 20,000 sterling pounds, for revealing vital information about troops and equipment at West Point. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what he wrote after the encoded message was decoded. <laughs> this is what he wrote. On the, 13th, uh, on the 13th instant, I addressed a letter to you expressing my sentiments and expectations that the following preliminaries be settled previous to cooperating. Mm -hmm. First, that Sir Henry secure to me my property valued at 10,000 sterling pounds to be paid to me or my heirs in case of loss. Mm. And as soon as that happens, 100 pounds per annum to be secured to me for life in lieu of the pay and emoluments I give up for my services as they shall deserve. Wow. If I point out a plan of cooperation by which Sir Henry <coughs> shall possess himself of mm. West Point, the garrison ETC, ETC, <laughs> 20,000 sterling pounds, I think will be a cheap purchase for an object of so much importance. Wow. He, knew, he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I request 1,000 pounds to be paid for my age, uh, to be paid to my agent. I expect a full and explicit answer. On the 20th, I set for West Point. A personal interview with an officer that you can confide in is absolutely necessary to plan matters. In the meantime, I shall communicate to a mutual friend, Stansbury, all the intelligence in my power mm. until I have the pleasure of your answer. Wow. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. You sold your entire country for 20,000 sterling pounds. And you people say you could use love money? <laughs> I like how you had to drag Kikus into this. <laughs> um, I quite enjoy. I had never heard of Benedict Arnold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, I feel like this betrayal is not as black and white. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's important, which is what this book does, to give the man context. Yes. Yeah. 
So as the war had won on, many had lost their enthusiasm and dropped out of the cause, leaving Arnold increasingly frustrated by his fellow uh, citizens. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he was disgusted almost because he was such a patriot. He really loved his country and the cause of what the revolution was about, mm -hmm. or the war was about. And so he would even call them sunshine patriots, that they were just flaky you know they wow. um he just didn't he didn't have much trust in them yes. and, and that came out in his personality so i came across the cia they have a formula for or a framework for predicting whether somebody would defect or not oh, I'd love and to i see think that. yes I'd we can use that. it to figure out what was going on with uh, benedict mm -hmm. or arnold benedict um it it is individual psychology multiplied by circumstance mm -hmm. equals defection. And it's not an exact science, but yeah. if it is true, it says that we're all prone to varying degrees of situational unhappiness mm -hmm. and that self-interest often motivates our desires. So if we look at, for instance, his individual psychology, um, there's a book by Eric D. Lehman, um, who did a book called The Homegrown Terror, Benedict Arnold and the Burning of New London. Mm -hmm. And he notes through correspondence that letters that uh, Benedict would write, mm -hmm. that um, he was often lacking in feeling, i.e. he was sociopathic. Uh, um, and others often showed him as having too much feeling. He couldn't control his temper. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing he found across all the correspondence was his selfish ambition, which came from a profound lack of self-esteem as a child and a young man so the book itself goes through his you know um, how he grew up mm -hmm. father leaving him with no money having to work all those things mm -hmm. and I think the individual psychology in this case is leading him to this idea of personal honor versus country honor so we have the circumstance in which uh, or the context in which we see um, a man with great ambition mm -hmm. In fact, they say he's a man on the make, a man in a hurry. He was successful in business and then wartime happens. So um, the taxes and all those things start to hinder his business. And then he still owed Congress about a thousand pounds, a sum that he, they say would probably have bankrupted him. And he didn't want his children to suffer the humiliation of being the sons of a debtor. Mm. So this, all these things have taken a toll. And then Peggy, the love of his life, who's younger than him, he's bought this lavish house of which he must... Uh, maintain and, maintain and mm. pay for. So you have circumstance there, which is leading him. He's, he's in a desperate place. And then he had been passed over multiple times by younger um, people in the military. And so he, would, he was increasingly frustrated because he was such a good um, general. general on yeah. the battlefield, but he wasn't getting the recognition. Yeah. And then he had been court-martialed by people who he respected and loved. Yes. And so there's this increasing frustration. See. So see. when you do those things, so his individual psychology, his personality, yes. multiply by the circumstance in which he finds himself, mm. the level of defection was likely Yes. to be high mm. and which is what we saw yes now the interesting thing i like about this book was the thing they say about the hero of one side can be the traitor on the other side now he thought that by being a traitor he was doing himself this big personal honor that he mm -hmm. could continue to pay um, and hold his family together mm. but for his country they saw this as the biggest uh, betrayal yeah. yeah and this selfish ambition got in his way mm -hmm. essentially um and so the last thing i will say is um on this, the real tragedy, which is what uh, Malcolm Lee says in the book, is that a brilliant and heroic man opted to betray the victory he had done so much to achieve in order to retain his personal honor. And in the process, he dishonored his name for eternity. Mm -hmm. If time cannot bring forgiveness, can it not bring some measure of understanding? Mm. So I think context in any betrayal is important. Um, I and I think this week we've sort of gone through all those betrayals. I don't know, GK. You uh, don't know? No, no, actually. And I, the reason I say that is yeah. I was watching yesterday the yeah. conversation about Caesar and Brutus and everything. Yes. Mm. Okay. And I thought to myself, yeah. Um, on thing on matters integrity, mm, right? Mm. Was Brutus's decision to join the conspirators an act of treason, or was he a man of integrity? Mm. Was he acting to protect the republic from a would-be dictator? Yeah. And this is the thing: um, Are there any principles so important to you that you would betray a friend for those ideals? I, I struggle with that. I don't know mm. uh, what the answer of that will be. That's yeah. a good, good question. I mean, this with Caesar and Brutus, I think I can understand that. But yeah. in this case, it's so yes. sad because the the United States, it wasn't even the United States at this point. Yes. Yeah. America was on the verge of finding out what kind of country it wanted to be. It yeah. was fighting the ideals of its colonizer. It was on the cusp of being a new nation. Yeah. And you have this person who jeopardized all of that. Yeah. 
and I think it's quite okay. And the I'm personal context in that sense over overrode overrode exactly the, the, the duty of good. a country. Exactly. You know, you know, you know, GK. You remind me of a story of a man called Ashraf Marwan. Yes. Ashraf Marwan, who a, betrayed he, yeah, he, Egypt. Yeah, he was a double. He was a son-in-law of Gabal, uh, Gamal Abdel Nasser. Yeah. And this guy gets to London krum, uh, from a phone booth, he rings Mossad in London, mm. and says that he wants to turn on his country. But again, personal yeah. context yeah. there is important. Uh, absolutely. And, Nasser yeah, had overlooked. And, uh, that, that's exactly where treated I was going. Treated him like he was nobody. Uh, NASA treated this guy like a like like, like, a, no like, like yeah. a nobody. So people and, gravitate towards and, and, where they and, wanted. And, and, and he went to where he had he was going to share most value. Yeah. By the same time, ended up being one of Mossad's best agent. Can but you is imagine? that but is that valid? And I'm really trying to put this in the context of Kenya. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Is it worth betraying your country L yeah. for some? egotistical, narcissistic idea of, well, you know, no. your own personal value. The, I don't the, think the, so. The, but the don't case, underestimate self-interest. However, case, I, do, I am very the, interested with this equation you came up with, because yeah. if anything, it allows us to profile those that's, people. That's exactly where I was going to, Jay. The case of <laughs> Kenya, the case of Kenya should be tested <laughs> oh, on that CIA formula. And let me tell you, this, the, the, the threshold of betrayal, you can be sure, has got nothing to do with the Ashraf Maran situation, or your situation as well. Yeah. It's got everything to do with money and actually role ambition and power that's well, it guys on a day where we had winning headline and winning cartoon from the star i want to leave you with this arnold was willing and even eager to die a soldier's death to mm. win independence mm. uh, such single-minded dedication to personal honor is very rare to see these days um, and george bernard shaw once said patriotism is your conviction that this country is superior to all others because you were born in it. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, to what great extent would you go for your country? Have a lovely evening. Please remember to subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel, but also find us on TV. We're on GoTV, Hi Peter, and Startup. See you.